Our next segment will be My Company Info. When we hover over the My Company Info, the first tab is Site Title. Here is where you can place your name or your company name or both. This will appear at the upper right of your screen depending on the template you're on. With the template we've selected, it will appear at the upper right. If you have text that needs to be separated by a line, you would use a, a little code here what we see a break. It's a less than sign, BR, greater than sign. If you type text from left to right, it will on your website go from left to right and then may lay over some pictures, uh, any text you may have already for other things. So to keep it short and make it show underneath each other, it would be your name or your company name with the less than sign, BR, greater than sign, and then what are the other text would be. Then always save changes. Next under My Company Info is the site subtitle. This could be a tagline that you may be well known for. This field will show different areas on different templates. So type in some information, save your changes, and then edit and preview the site so you can see where it's placed so you know if it's appropriate you use this field or not. The footer disclaimer. Depending on your broker-dealer, you may not see this field because they want to be in full control of your footer disclaimer. Otherwise, if you have this field, this will appear on all the pages of your website. So you would put the information of your footer in this area here. If you have a broker-dealer and you have this information, they have probably emailed you the information. Just copy and paste into the field. I'm going to take a moment here just to show the proper way of copying and pasting. I'm going to delete this. When you're ready to copy and paste any content into the box, we don't paste directly into the box. We have three clipboards here. The middle clipboard is the best. The clipboard states, paste as plain text. It will take whatever information you're copying in this field and then scrub out any code. You won't see any code when you copy and paste it. You could even come in and copy and paste and you don't see anything, but when we go to the site, you may see some odd characters, things like that. So always use the clipboard uh, for any copying and pasting. Once your text is here, especially for the footer, you have to hyperlink FINRA and SIPC. So to hyperlink anything, and this exercise is the same whether you're hyperlinking a word or hyperlinking a picture. You would left click on your picture or highlight your text. We'll go to the center row of the different icons here. Look for the earth with the link. It'll say link when you hover over it. When you click on the link, it will open up and state link. Your cursor is already flashing in the URL field. We'll type in the URL for FINRA. Over to the left, we separate uh, the HTTP. This is under a field called protocol because sometimes when you're creating links, it may be HTTP or it may be HTTPS. Sometimes if you're linking within the website, we'll use the word other. But for now, we would use HTTP because when we went to the website, we're going to copy and paste. We look up in the address bar and it will tell us to the left which protocol it is. So only the www field is required in the URL and then we would select which protocol is appropriate. The last part, like a triangle, we'll click on target and our drop down will select new window and then we'll select save changes. The reason we do the target is because when someone clicks on the link and leaves your website, once they're done and they close the window, we want to make sure they're still on your website. If you've ever uh, looked at a website and did a lot of clicks and all of a sudden you drop off the website, you may not take the time to go back to the website. So we want to make sure your client stays on your website. So we'll now link SIPC. Our protocol is still HTTP. Then our target, new window, we'll select OK. And then we'll select Save Changes. We always end up on what's called the Site Status page. This lets you know the last time any action was done on any page, it gives you the date. You'll notice one of three colors will appear. 
Red means you've just done the work, but you haven't submitted it yet. Black means you've done the work and you've selected the Update Site tab to notify compliance or to allow it to go live. Black will change the green once it's approved and it'll always tell you the last date it was done. Back to the My Company Info tab, we'll go down to the home page image. Generally, anything you want on the website, we always have to place into the stored files. But in this case, if you're an independent advisor and you need to place your photo in, you can actually place it directly in the home page image field. Now, do keep in mind, again, whatever size you have saved on your computer is the size it's going to display on this screen. So make sure your size is appropriate. An individual advisor's headshot should only be about 160 pixels wide. It'll tell you right here. And your height is generally controlled by the original picture, so you don't have to try to force a particular size in there. When you go to Paint or Photoshop to do your photos, make sure 160 pixels, and then you'll have a nice headshot. Your section that you're in will always tell you the area you have for your home page. So in this case, 590 pixels wide. Maybe you don't want to use a photo of yourself. You want maybe a picture of a building, um, some other type of image, a team picture, anything you could use. Know that it needs to be at the max 590 pixels wide. Next under My Company Info is the home, excuse me, custom masthead image. This is the same as your logo. Under Site Basics, it's called Upload Masthead. Under My Company Info, it says Custom Masthead Image. So it's the same exercise. You look on your desktop where you've stored your logo, go down to your Browse or Choose File tab, and upload your logo to appear at the top of your website. Your home page text. The text that you see on the home page of the website is found under My Company Info. When you're on the site, all the pages of About Us you find under Custom Pages. So your home page text will already have text in the field. It's up to you. If you would like to keep it, edit it, you can highlight it, delete it, bring over your own text, paste it in its place, making sure you use the clipboard. And of course, remember to hit Save Changes once you're done. After the My Home Page text, you can type in your office name. My company info, office address, we only need the street address. My company info, office city. Each one of these is just a line by line item. Office state. This one here, you would just do a drop down, pick the appropriate state. And then of course, zip. If you find you need to place multiple addresses on your home page, make sure you give us a call. This would be advanced work and we can help you with that. Your telephone. If you have multiple telephones, you want to rather than a cell or an office, you can put the individual's name. Just type out their name, telephone number, comma, second name, telephone number. If it doesn't format properly, we may need to use the break which was the less than sign, BR, greater than sign. That will allow it to line up underneath each other. Just depends on how you'd like the layout on the website. Next, My Company Info, Office Facts. The My Company Info drop-down is very long, so make sure you leave enough room so that you can actually see all the content. Your email address. Here, here you can't edit and try to give emails titles. It will lose its ability to actually be able to click on. You want to type in your email address, put in a comma, and type in your second email address. And then save changes. After the email address is the directions to you. This would be advanced work in the directions to you section. This appears on the contact us page. This will be the page we will help you build out if you need multiple locations. When we click on the contact us page, it allows you to put in photographs for different locations. 
the maps for the different locations, and you could even type in text uh, along giving instructions to those locations. So if you have more than one location, we can help you with the directions to you feature. Our next section under My Company Info is the Privacy Policy page. You can copy and paste your own content if you have a privacy policy you need to use, or you could use the Broadridge provided privacy policy. Next, default site description. Actually, the next three, this you work on after the site is actually live. This is part of Google and registering with Google. These are fields you need to fill out before you register with Google. So when they come to your website and index your website, they pick uh, certain keywords and information, and this is the field that you do it in. So one is called a default site description. One is keywords. Uh, one thing about the keywords, Google does not read the keyword section, but other search engines will. The browser title bar, this is the tabs at the top here. These are called browser title bar tabs or web pages, however you're used to seeing them or calling them. That would be filled out in that section. And this is definitely something that needs to be done right before you register with Google. Now the contact us intro and contact us acknowledgement forms, all websites have contact us forms. When you click on them, it's already pre-filled out the information to put on it. Person would just fill it in. But maybe you're directing people to these forms for various reasons and you need to spell that out. You have the opportunity here of customizing what will show at the top of that form. So you can do this under the my company info, con intro, or excuse me, contact us intro paragraph. Next, contact us acknowledgement. Once a person has filled out that form, selected submit, a uh, prompt pops up, thank you for your submission, gives the name, address, phone number, all your contact information. And it can also see then what you will add here if you'd like to make a, a statement to the viewer. So you type that information here, of course, save changes. And that will take care of, oh, excuse me, we have a disclaimer here. Not everyone will see these on your websites, so it depends on your broker-dealer, what you have access to. Also, the license states. Not everyone uses these fields, so when you're in your admin and you hover over My Company Info, whatever applies to you is what you'll see. 